Hey guys, a lot's been said about Will. We all want to wonder where is Kate? It looks like they're gearing up for a divorce, but I wanted to roll things back and just give you guys a little bit of insight into you guys. Everyone that knew anything saw this coming. Let's take a look at inside the palace's lies, propaganda, or whatever you want to call it, that basically set um, Kate up to be nothing more than a useless idiot to William's insistence, quest for power, and allegedly some more Rose Hanaberry's good loving. You guys, look at this interesting take I found on um, TikTok. Let me know what you think in the comments, but I promise you it's a really, really good look into the palace, uh, the monarchy PR machine, that even when they were trying to make Will and Kate look like the best of times, it never was. By the end of this, you will believe she was nothing but a broad mirror to bring beautiful children to the world that didn't have horsey faces. And now that that's been completed, they have no more use for her. Listen to this. Hi, welcome back to Monarchist Propaganda that gets ignored because it's marketed towards women. This is part two of looking at Life Magazine's William and Kate, The Life and Love of a Future King and Queen, their 10th anniversary. It's amazing how many more details we get now in this 10th anniversary edition that we didn't get during their wedding edition. Let's start on literally the most troubling note of the whole article. Remember how I said it was so odd that we didn't get any details about what Will's and Kate's actual relationship looked like? Well, I guess we learned why because this part right here is troubling. Obstinate and strong-willed, William could be an overwhelming presence. At times, Kate felt taken for granted, treated like a servant rather than a girlfriend. Pal Michael Chung recalled that William could be flip and curt with her. She didn't like it when he ignored her and got into a conversation with someone as though she wasn't there. He expected Kate to run after him, and the longer they knew each other, the more he seemed to keep her on a tight leash. Still, she stuck it out loyally. As propaganda marketed towards women, this is troubling. This is concerning, right? This is not saying love story to me. This isn't saying fairy tale. Ladies, if you've got a man who takes advantage of you, ignores you, um, is flippin' curt with you, treats you like a servant, and keeps you on a tight leash, um, I'm gonna say run? What part of this is a love story? What part of this should be celebrated? What's odd though is even though we just heard that William was kind of a bit of an asshole as a boyfriend, we learned that Charles really liked Kate and was, quote, very fond of her and always saw her as a future daughter-in-law. The problem is it's not really Charles's business, right? Like whether or not he likes her or not, I mean, it doesn't sound like a healthy relationship. And William made it pretty clear that he didn't want to get married very young. He said, quote, I don't want to get married until I'm at least 28 or maybe 30, which I get. I 100% get that, okay? I'm a 30-year-old so that's like afraid of marriage. I get it. Little bit of fluffing up their degrees again. It says, quote, in June 2005, William and Kate graduated with honors from St. Andrews. And again, this is just playing off the fact that people don't know how Scottish degrees work. A Scottish bachelor's degree is called an MA honors, a Master of Arts honors. But it is just a bachelor's degree. It is nothing special. It's nothing like with distinction or anything. They just have bachelor's, regular bachelor's degrees. So unfortunately, because Kate has this connection to William, she gets to be stalked and harassed by the media. Paparazzi staked out her flat and tailed her on shopping trips, visits the gym, most anywhere. When she was out with William at a pub or club, Kate had the protection of his security team, but otherwise she was on her own. And what advice can the royal family give her? Basically just to smile to the camera, but not too broadly, lest she be seen as gloating or self-satisfied. To comport herself graciously, but never pose for pictures or engage journalists. It was a perilously delicate dance. It sounds like you literally can't win. You have to smile, but you can't smile too much. You have to engage with the photographers, but you can't engage too much. It basically makes it impossible for somebody to actually win in this situation, and then if something comes out that the royal family is unhappy with in the media, they get to scapegoat the person that's being stalked and harassed by the media and claim, well, you weren't engaging with them correctly. You're the problem. I also found it odd that Kate actually spent time with Charles and Camilla without William, which 
Like, it, that's really strange, isn't it? And they claim that, like, Camilla schooled her in etiquette and all this nonsense, which is like, I would rather that they, like, actually protected her than, like, gave her, like, curtsying tips, you know? But despite Charles and Camilla trying to, like, get Kate ready to join the royal family, I guess, on their terms, William was out there sowing his wild oats and got caught photographed with two brunettes on a night out. Weird, I thought we were here to learn about the love story between Kate and William. Mostly all I'm hearing is that their relationship was messy as fuck. But despite William being caught with other girls, he got mad when Kate was seen out with other guys, and it says, quite frankly, he didn't like the idea of another guy enjoying a role in the hay with his girl. Why is William so possessive of Kate? It doesn't even sound like he really likes her, honestly. All of these stories make him sound like he just really couldn't give a shit about her. He doesn't respect her. He doesn't seem to, like, enjoy her company that much. He seems to, like, go off on her all the time. Remember in the last book where we talked about this weird secret pact that William and Kate supposedly had? Well, it gets mentioned again here. We get a little bit more detail. So apparently the pact was sometime around 2007-2008, and the idea was that, quote, they didn't agree to get married there and then. What they made was a pact. William told Kate she was the one, but he was not yet ready to get married. He promised her his commitment and said he would not let her down, and she in turn agreed to wait for him. Which, like, that's totally fine, but, like, I just don't understand what what's the purpose of this pact here? Like, what... What was William actually saying in this moment? Like, why why didn't they just have, like, a long engagement? Like, I'm just confused. Like, what what makes this, like, a pact? Like, what, what was the pact really trying to say here? The press starts to catch on that Kate is basically a Nepo baby and doesn't actually have a job, so they start getting on her, her a little bit for that. So somehow to make it all better, they go full Nepo baby, and Carol Middleton gives her a job at her, like, party business or whatever the hell it is. Also, I can't really get into it, but like looking at this page here, like count the number of times where William and Kate aren't actually like together. They're not near each other or whatever. Like he's off doing whatever military things or, or like going on these holidays and stuff without her. So it's very odd. Like they've been together for a long, long time, but there are like tons of times where they're really not together together. You know what I mean? So we finally get to the engagement and it seems like a little bit all over the place like we're we're just missing a lot of like detail here I'm not saying they need to tell us everything but like it just seems like it came out of nowhere for everybody at the palace before making a public announcement William had to follow the Royal Marriages Act of 1772 and ask for the Queen's consent on November 16th 2010 Elizabeth II was reading briefing notes over breakfast cornflakes with Philip when their grandson called to make the request the Queen had no idea that there would be an announcement that morning. It was rather hurried because William was apparently worried about it leaking out. He blindsided the Queen? How dare he? But then we finally get to the whole point. What is this all about? It's about talking about how this is helpful for the monarchy. Quote, This young and glamorous couple appeared to be breathing new life into the monarchy, Nichols writes. A national poll conducted then by the Sunday Times found that the majority of the public thought William would make a better king than Charles, and that his father should step out of the line of succession. And we've seen countless times how royal biographers and royal experts and all that have tried to quash that because they know that if they change anything about hereditary succession, it breaks the entire concept of monarchy down, right? It becomes democracy and they cannot have that. Catherine once said that William was lucky to have her. Given her faultless display on the biggest day of her life, the same might be said of the monarchy. It's all about the PR of the monarchy. It's about, can we show enough pictures of this pretty, pretty princess on her big wedding day so that the crowd gets to enjoy this little spectacle, this little fantasy of a fairy tale, and not look into the fact that these people are at the heart of their government. That William will one day be the head of state. 
the head of the government, even if they claim he doesn't have power, blah, 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 that's nonsense. And you should look into how your government actually functions. It's about the soap opera. Quote, 15 years after Diana's death, the scandal sheet soap opera seemed a distant memory. The once sullied British monarchy was seeing its popularity soar. At the core of this different perception were William and Kate, who symbolized a new hope. The Duchess had proved to be a sparkling asset. Stay tuned because we got 10 years of marriage to get through now. And considering their dating life didn't seem to be going too well, I don't know. 